plants are the most visible feature of the living landscape around us. Much of our planet is green, covered with plants of every imaginable shape and size. Plants ensure that we have a continuous supply of oxygen. Using an amazing process called photosynthesis, plants absorb carbon dioxide and water, then capture some energy from sunlight and use it to release oxygen back into the atmosphere. We, and the other animals on planet Earth, need oxygen. Plants are also very interesting. Take the time to learn about them and you will find they are as fascinating as anything on Earth. On a recent walk, I found a very large patch of a familiar plant. These plants are commonly called horsetails, supposedly because the structure looks like a horse's tail. You will find these plants growing just about anywhere. I'm sure you have seen plants like these before. Perhaps you didn't know that these plants are actually dinosaurs of the plant world. Yes, these horsetails are the living descendants of the huge trees of the Jurassic period. Millions of years ago, these horsetails were as tall as modern trees and created vast forests, forests that echoed with the roar of the Tyrannosaurus. The dinosaurs are gone, but the forests are still with us. Miniaturized by millions of years of competition with newly evolving trees, these ancient plants have found a way to survive as tiny Jurassic forests quietly living among the plants in your backyard. These fossils are much larger than the living plant, but they show how similar our modern horsetails are to their ancient ancestors. Study a plant carefully and you will find something interesting about it. Milkweed, for instance, has the most ingenious method for spreading pollen. The plant has developed a trap for insects that causes a bag of pollen to be attached to the insect's leg and carried to the next flower. These blue flowers are on a flax plant. You may know flax as a food. Did you know that the ancient Egyptians used the fiber from the stem of this plant to make their clothing? We still use it today. The fabric is called linen. The relationship of plants to us and all other living things on the planet is very complex and there remains much to be discovered. A good way to start learning about plants is to pick up a good plant guide for your area and try to identify some plants. Learn about the special methods scientists use for naming plants and other living things on Earth. Because common names for plants vary all around the world, it is important that every scientist on Earth use the same name for a specific plant. For instance, scientists call horsetails equisetum and milkweed asclepius. There are hundreds of common names for horsetail and milkweed around the world, but only one scientific name. On a recent trip to Costa Rica, our friend Dr. Bill Chaliak, a plant geneticist, explained the importance of this identification system. And what you see behind is this absolute riot, the sea of green. Now, in order to be able to make any sense of this, for centuries, scientists have been collecting plants and animals as well, but we'll focus on plants 
and have been pressing them and categorizing them and cataloging them and trying to understand them that from whether it's their flowers or their leaves or their roots or various uh, properties that they have or today we actually use DNA as well. Now, in, the, in being able to understand a plant or a collection of plants, it allows us to start understanding ecosystems. And one of the people who gave rise to this was a chap called Linnaeus. A couple hundred years ago, he worked up a classification system that we actually use today. And it consists, at its most basic level, of a genus and a species. Those two terms allow botanists or zoologists or herpetologists or whateverologists to understand and communicate with each other in a universal way. It's kind of like music. So I could be talking to somebody who understands no English and I don't understand their language, but if we're talking about botany, we can understand each other because we've got this universal classification system. It's a very beautiful and a very useful tool. If you have constructed a plant press at one of our workshops or have purchased a plant press, you too can start a plant collection. One of the exciting things about collecting an actual sample of a plant is that you are also collecting its DNA and all of the microorganisms that exist in and around the plant. This collected material may be very important at some point in the future. Perhaps 50 years after you collected it, New knowledge about DNA would make your sample crucial to confirming a new theory about evolution. Be careful when collecting plants. Some plants are covered in spikes and some, like stinging nettles and poison ivy, cause skin irritations. Identify your plant before you collect it as some plants are very rare and should not be collected. I often collect from country roadsides as road crews regularly cut down all the plants at the side of the road and you can collect them before they are destroyed.